What's up you guys, and of course always welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better. And this week we're covering Dusknar vs Golurk, two physical ghost times, which by the way there are very few of, that covers the same type of niches and for the longest time has really not have the means to actually go physical, mainly because lacking proper physical ghost stat besides of Shadow Punch. This generation, generation 8, they got Poltergeist and finally they're pretty much both do the same thing. The Waller can do stuff differently, they have a clear cut essential this is what they do best set. But we're gonna cover more than that as we're gonna cover the Smoga meta as much as the League meta to find out which one of these two that really are better. And with that said, I'm gonna cover Pokemon course introduced first before we talk about the removal, and that's gonna be the Dusk Noir. So Dusk Noir has one of those very weird splits when it comes to its stats because while it actually is fairly bulky, the defense and special defense of 135, it has a low HP of 45, so it's quite weird. However, it is significantly bulky, not a ghost type, and definitely can soak a few hits. However, its good traits kind of stops there because there's a low speed of 45, which is it's not awful, but it's definitely awful if you want to go for a tank roll. It's a pretty much a special attack that isn't usable in contrast to an attack of 100, which is good, but it's definitely not good enough if you want to go for, like I said, a tank roll. It has two very solid, however, abilities in Frisk and Pressure. Frisk is, of course, even better this generation due to this move Poltergeist, which pretty much ensures that that move is going to work as long as you can Frisk an item from your opponent. And also, as a just anti lead, you cannot Frisk your items and pretty much get a clear cut what your opponent is all about. But Pressure is probably where this Pokemon does best. As this is a Pokemon that, since it has a bulk of staying in and capitalizing on a rest hog set or pain splits, which by the way works well, really well with a 45 HP, uh, HP stat, um, pressure also pretty much ensures that if you can't beat this guy, you're gonna lose your PP just straight on at it. Unfortunately, due to the means of Generation 8, the PP stalling set, which probably would have been very, very viable for this generation, is due to 20 minute timer not necessarily um, good for content, but as a showdown set, it works quite all right. And Ghost Type is actually good defensive typing, as you have two immunities in fighting normal, resists a bug and poison, which is great. It weakens the dark and ghost, pretty much ensures that there are matchups you're gonna avoid off, and they aren't necessarily that common. And I decided to include in, instead of the move pool, I was gonna debate them together with both the mods themselves. I really wanna take the standard clean cut set for Poltergeist, and or, I mean, that's not what I'm using right now. And the most common set is Poltergeist, Earthquake, Shadow Sneak. They would actually get Sucker Punch 2 to get with Para Punch, Trick, or Dark is Lariat. And this is contrast with a Choice Band set or an Assault Fist to get with Frisk and Adamant. And it's straight up Wall Breaker. While 100 isn't necessarily all that scary, contrast to Assault Fist with Para Punch is actually quite great. And combined with Shadow Sneak, pretty much negate that low speed here. And Poltergeist and Earthquake covers the means of a lot of it. There really are really no solid check for this type of set, which works wonder for it. I only think that one Pokemon that can kind of stand up to it are the Dark and Flying combination, and they're quite rare. We're only two Pokemon residing in the Smoga meta as of right now. That said, this set is definitely one of the better ones. It has others, such as the Trick Room set, we're gonna cover later. But overall, Dustmar is quite a solid physical wall breaker and sweeper, but maybe a bit on the weaker side on its attack stat. But at the same time, it is definitely bulky enough to stay in the game for the long run. Now enter Golurk. Now, before we go over the stats themselves, we have to talk about its combination of typing, which is ground and ghost. It is well, from his introduction, the first of its kind, of course, with Palestine introduced a few years after. Ground and Ghost is actually one of the weird types, because it is the only type with free immunities in electric, fine and normal, stronger resist poison, and resist bug and rock. But the weaknesses has got plenty, and it's definitely more than just Dark and Ghost, as it has to watch out for grass, ice and water, which are quite common. But at the same time, there is a payoff for this combination, and that is that you actually resist in and deal very well with any Volt Turners. And till Generation 8, that was actually quite a trade to have. Now, Flip Turn introduced, yeah, there are issues involved with that combination. That said, though, the, the, the typing is solid, it's very solid, and so is Golurk as a whole. As it's HP Shadow 89, yeah, it's 
It has double HP pretty much than the Dusk Noir, but the defenses are nowhere near as good as our split at 80, which, yeah, this pretty much means that when Golurk is taking hits, it is taking hits. It is significantly bulky to an extent, but it's definitely not on par with what Dusk Noir can take and provide. But uh, when we're talking about Golurk, we're probably talking more about that attack set of 124. Which, by the way, not being 125, I'm just gonna straight on and say it. Why? <laughs> but besides that, yeah, it's a very, very solid attack stat. And special attack is not gonna be workable ever. 55, yeah, as it was in Dustmore, actually. And the speed at 55, it's still on the slower side. But being a you know a wall breaker, yeah, you, you kind of expect to just middle the speeds of beating the ones that are slower and you and really punish them. It actually has a very good array of abilities too in Iron Fist, which boosts, by the way, it's kind of like Lustring Shadow Punch, but also the moves like Drain Punch, Dynamic Punch, Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, and Ice Punch, which, by the way, it's a ground to get Ice Punch, that's nice. It also has Clutch, you know, or Klutz, <laughs> hard to say in Swedish, but that's a move that basically ignores whatever item you have, and in contrast to Dusk, or I mean, Golar getting. Um, trick this generation, it pretty much can carry a flame orb and actually split that to your opposing opponent or even post an assault vest to a Pokemon that used something like recovery move and whatnot. And all of a sudden, Golurk is now a disruptor set, which is, by the way, for its physical brownness to be able to handicap another Pokemon is quite nice. But in my honest opinion, the best ability to have on this Pokemon, no matter what, is no god. Pulse Guys is actually a move that isn't guaranteed to hit. It is a 90% move, but no guards ensures that that's no longer a contrast or something you need to ever consider. And take that in mind that no guard is something that boosts your, your everything, even against you, gets 100% accurate. It also means that Stone Edge is no longer an issue, Dynamic Punch is no longer an issue. And overall, this pretty much allows Golurk to, if it's gonna hit, it's definitely gonna land. And whatever it does land, it's gonna definitely sting. And the current set of Poltergeist in the Smoga meta right now, and this is from the RU, are Poltergeist, Earthquake, Heatcraft, and Darkest Lariat. I argue, of course, that Dynamic Punch should be a part of this set, and so does Stone Edge, but Heatcraft is definitely a strong filler, and the Choice Band is, yeah, use it for Choice Band. You definitely go adamant to make sure that you have sporting as much damage output that you can. But with that said, if it were something I said Golurk were kind of lacking at, it is the priority. It doesn't have Sucker Punch and doesn't have Shadow Sneak. So definitely allowing itself to just go on the high damage and really hope it doesn't get sunk back. But it can only take so much hits, even with those a plethora of immunities and resistances. So with the move pool, I don't think I already say that, you know, they get the elemental punches in theory. They both get poltergeist and earthquake, which makes them the bread and butter move pool of whatever they do, as ground and ghost are well phenomenal coverage for the most of the meta. However, when it comes to Dusknar, what it brings to the table they're a bit more unique for it. It is actually that it can learn two set of moves in Calm Mind of course and Power Punch and Calm Mind one standing out here as with pressure, it can in theory stall out a lot of mods in contrast with that with Will-O-Wisp and you got a really nasty set on your hand. It also got Skitter Smack and a bug move that lowers special attack too. So it kind of speaks volume for it. Uh, it also has a inferior, <laughs> inferior I should say, um, a way of recovering the pain split, which definitely would sound like Will-O-Wisp. It's just, it works wonder for it. It also can lock in Pokemon with Infestation. And in theory, you could go for a move of Poltergeist, Infestation, Will-O-Wisp and Pain Split and probably stall up Pokemon out just effortlessly. It also is one of the few mods to get Seismic Toss and Nightshade. So if you don't want to have a physical move pull, you could go about with shipping damage to get it with Will-O-Wisp or Toxic. And it probably will work out just fine. Um, in contrast, it also gets Trick Room, which makes Dustmore a bit more unique. It's definitely one of the better, more defensive Trick Roomer. I think only rivaled by something like Cresselia and Porygon 2 when it comes to what it could do. And quite frankly, if it just was a slight bit stronger, maybe if it were just 1 in 20 in its attack stat, it would have been a phenomenal, well, semi-sweeper for Trick Room. Unfortunately, it doesn't have that essence, and I guess Power Punch kind of covers for that just to get yourself going. But the only like real positive trait which makes Dustnor's physical set so well-rounded, even though lesser used, 
is that when the trick room is over and when your power up punching is over, you can always resign yourself of not only using the Poltergeist move but also capitalizing on something like Shadow Sneak or Sucker Punch. It's a definitely a good unique trait for a slower Pokemon to have high damage priority move. So yeah, while it isn't the perfect Pokemon, it definitely has the means to really pack a punch and it even could go as an anti-staller thanks to actually carrying something like both Haze and Disable. It's a definitely unique trait and does, you know, Lee Gaspic Irade does not to be quite a flexible Pokemon for whatever matchup is going up against. Yes, it's not perfect, but I'm damn sure to say it is way better than some people let it off to be. When it comes to so Goldrick's move pool is probably one of the broadest ghost type move pool I ever got my hands on. It is on the level of the Nido Kings, on the normal types. It is a weird thing to talk about. Golurk really, when it was starting off, got all the tools to be a very very good Pokemon, but just didn't become it at first. And for me, what's standing out the most is that Skullurk has the ability to actually set up Stealth Rocks. It is a very very offensive Pokemon that threatens out common defoggers with ease and can actually set up Stealth Rocks really quite effortlessly. Think about this, all the Magic Fans Pokemon that want to force this guy out are destroyed by a proper Poltergeist or Shadow Punch for that matter. So it's definitely a strength for it. I think it's something that is beyond me. It also gets flying by the way, I'm gonna straight on and get it. Um, besides that, we mentioned that the Nogars that really like to use something like um, Dynamic Punch, but it also has an Assault Vest set which works very well with Grain Punch, which the mood also gets. And if you want to go for a straight on Beast Mode variant of um, Gold Rogue, you could go for Close Combat, which is probably the bread and butter if you want to go for a, a more like devastating set and not go for the Confusion Hacks, which is something that I like to do. It's it's not ideal all the time, I can definitely see uh, the extra power coming in clutch and it's kind of nice. <laughs> Besides that, it also gets rock polish, so it's able to negate the worst of it, which is its lower speed. While it isn't like, it wouldn't necessarily help it all that much, it does pretty much ensure that the Scarfers of 9 to 5 base speed would not be able to prioritize your Nova faster. And for me, that works wonders for it because that pretty much allows it to really, really punish the remaining mods that are left. While I still prefer the choice band, I said I think this is a definitely a more one sided boosting beast of a mon. I definitely get answers enough how important that is that, um, that it gets the tool to be something more than just your average bulky Pokemon or wall breaking Pokemon. And the reason, by the way, Trick was so important for this generation was because, like I said, Poltergeist is a move that needs an item to work properly, pretty much the, the anti-knockoff of this generation. And with Trick, you can pretty much send them your choice band just to really mess them up afterward, and that, I think that's just a great combination. You should also mention that Assault has said really like to use Rock Tube, which is also a move that pretty much negates the posting Pokemon speed and the follow-ups. <laughs> hits will be just as devastating. It also gets power up punch as much as Dusk Noir, and while it doesn't capitalize on it just as well, and it is mainly because it doesn't lack or doesn't have priority, it still is a combination I think is quite nice for it. But overall, you already know the best moves that Goldorg has, and while it has niches you can do besides that, it is definitely defined already as how a proper Ghost physical wall breaker should work, and I don't believe it gets much better than Golurk really are as at it right now. When it comes to who I think is better, in a smoke environment, like since they both in theory share what they do in well, which is choice bandit and a salt vest set, Golurk is by default a lot better. It is devastatingly better with a stronger or should say a second stab that is just as strong if not stronger and the ghost and ground combination as a whole since they both like to carry Quake and Poltergeist, guys it is close to a flawless combination and with Dusk Mirror, it's not, not only is it weaker slower it also lacks the second stab making gold work a whole lot better when it comes to a league environment however I think Dusk has a small edge, being able to carry a more defensive set, a trick room set, and pretty much support its team and disrupt the team opposing team much much more with East than Goldberg. But at the same time, yeah, that's a phenomenal trait. 
But there are other Pokemon that are better than that too. You much rather go with something like Porygon 2 if you want to have a more stable Creek Rumor, or Cresselia for that matter, or if you want to have a Disruptor. There are pranks for Pokemon like Sableye and, um, well, pretty much any Will O Whisper. I, I think in the Sean the Law is a stronger Disruptor Pokemon than Dustmar. So there are better options than it. I think Dustmar is one of those, yeah, it's a it's an average Pokemon at best and has a few sets that are above average. But the other Pokemon around it that perfected it, and Goldrick definitely perfected what Dustmar does best, which is the physical brownness. And the only thing it has above it is the priority. And while good, they're not good enough to make me say that the Goldrick is worse than Dustmar because. Goldurk is simply thrown at it a lot better. Dusknar needs the little bit, the little bit of like tweaks, one of them being get more attack, and I think it will work just fine. But as of right now, there is no questions asked. Goldurk is absolutely better than Dusk Noir. So with that said, guys, I really want to know what you guys are thinking, and also stay tuned for next week for this matchup. Until then, as always, take care, everyone. Bye.